Okay. Um, Okay, so it's our pleasure to have Dr. Arghajit Jana as our colloquium speaker today. Arghajit uh, did his uh, undergrad at Calcutta University and then master's uh, at St. Javier's College. Then he joined the uh, uh, joined ICSP in Kolkata for his PhD with uh, Professor Sandeep Chakraborty. Um, like many, like many of our recent uh, speakers. And then uh, uh, after uh, finishing his PhD, Arghajit has spent uh, postdoctoral, has done postdoctoral work at uh, the National Tsinghua University in China. And now he is a uh, university, is a Pondesit fellow at the Universidad Diego Portales in uh, Santiago, Chile. Uh, where one of our recent alumnus, alumni, Honorup uh, Dasgupta, recently joined as a PhD student as well. So, um, so Arghajit is originally an expert on accretion disk physics, uh, and uh, like uh, many such experts, he's also uh, he also works on um, uh, well uh, his works work extends to active galactic nuclei as well. So today he's going to talk to talk to you about. Uh, Changing Lucasians, which is a recent, uh, very active field of research in this subfield of astrophysics. So uh, we'll be eager to hear what Arvajit has to say. So Arvajit. Thank you for, thank you very much for introducing me for a nice introduction. So, so I, you can do this as well. <laughs> or maybe just use this and then change the thing. So, good afternoon, everyone. So, today I'll be talking about changing locations. So, this has been, although we know about changing locations for a long time, but this uh, recently this field has been really emerged, we can say. And the changing locations is interesting because these things has uh, challenge our understanding of AGNs, which has been like uh, last 40 years. So I'll be talking in details of that. So, so basically uh, about the agents, they are basically accretion supermassive black holes. So in every galaxy, you have a supermassive black hole at its center and the matter accretes in the black holes. And the, in that process, the gravitational potential energy is generally con uh, converted to radiation. And that we observe. So, so basically, this is uh, like some equations where if you move closer to the black hole, your potential energy increases. So, as the velocity of the particle, so that will increase also the temperature. So, closer into the black hole, your temperature will increase. As the temperature increases, so the frequency of the emerging radiation. So, from the vicinity of the black hole, we generally observe the X rays. That's why, uh, although the agents have image like from radio to gamma rays, but I'm mainly talking about the uh, X-ray and the optical wave band for this talk. So let's uh, talk about the how the structure of the agents at the very core. So at the very core, you have a one of the black holes, and this is the equation. The matter generally do not fall into the black hole. Directly, rather they rotate like spiral, and like uh, the angular momentum of the particle is removed by some kind of instability. It could be the viscous or magnetic in rotational instabilities. Once the angular momentum is removed, the matter falls into the black. So basically, this equation this emits the UV photons. They produce the multicolor black body component, and they are generally brightened the UV photons or UV wavelength. And then there is a region called X-ray corona or Compton cloud, which is a very compact region, which is located close to the black hole. This X-ray corona is basically a cloud of hot electrons. So part of the UV photons, which is coming from the accretion disk, 
is intercepted in this X-ray corona, and there happens inverse component. So this UV photon gains energy after scattering with the hot electrons, and this and then they become the X-ray photons. So this X-ray corona basically produces the X-ray power law, which we generally observe. About the um, dimension of this X-ray corona is typically 10 to 20 RG. It has been observed observationally, and the equation disk is. Uh, it has been observed. Yes, it's basically from the time variability. We can estimate the uh, dimension of the X-ray corona. And how big is that? It's around 10 to 20 RG. So typically like that. And then a question is uh, generally it is about 100 to 500 RG up to the outer disk. Then, if we move further away, we uh, have a region called VLR or broad line emitting region. And this VLR is uh, generally located about a few light days from the central black hole. And this broad lines generally produce the very broad optical lines. Or in the you can uh, see this in the UV and optical lines. So the FWHM or the broad um, broadness of these uh, lines are more than thousand kilometer per second. And then if we move further away, there is a uh, uh, popularly known as torus or this is the first scale obscura. This is basically the molecular hydrogen. So this molecular hydrogen generally emits the IR continuum. Actually, the uh, X-ray radiation from the X-ray corona is reinforced in this region and produces IR continuum. And also, this is very important because this structure blocks the optical or very soft energy X-rays, which is generally coming from this VLR region or the artificial They can block the light. So this is important. I will uh, tell about that why. And if we move further away, in this region it is called narrow line emitting region or NLR. This is also is been observed in the optical wavefront. So this NLR region produces very narrow lines, about a uh, hun few hundred kilometer per second, and they are generally located around hundred parsec from this central black hole. But this torus is located generally a few parsec, one or two parsec, or maybe less. But they are located about hundred parsec from this. So this is the like uh, whole inner structure of the Aegean spore. Also, I did not draw any jet in this here because this will just make the figure is complicated. So this is generally uh, observed. That we know like this structure now. So how do you constrain like the red edges in terms of? Like the broad line is farther away by the narrow is closer to the black. Yeah, yes. Okay. yes, because of one of the main uh, the simplest way is to look for the width line width. So if it's closer, your line will be broad. If it's okay. further away, your line will be smaller. This is just thermal problem, which is yeah, thermal problem. Okay. And then we let's talk about the classification of the agent. So depending on the which wavelength you are observing, you can classify the agents in several ways. So uh, I'm not going into that very complex classification. This is the very simplest one. So generally, if you observe in the optical one, you can classify it as type one or type two. If you observe in X-ray, you can classify it as obscured or unobscured. And if you are observing in radio, radio loud or radio quiet. So mainly I'll be talking about these two classification. I am not. I'm going to talk about this radio classification. And in my talk, most of uh, all the agents are, I'll be talking about that radio point. <laughs> so let's talk about the optical classification. So I have uh, told you the um, broad lines and narrow lines. So this is a typical spectrum of a type 1 agent where you can see one broad line and then there's narrow line. So the type 1 agents, so both kind of spectra. I'm sorry. Both kind of lines in their spectra, broad and narrow. So typical uh, width of this are like more than thousand kilometer per second. Typical uh, width of these narrow lines are like hundred, few hundred or two hundred kilometer per second. 
and there are other kind of agents which is type two agent which just only through the narrow lens no broad lens is observed in this so this is uh, although there is some more complex application like type 1.2 1.5 1.8 but broadly this, uh, we can just classify in two ways Uh, next, I'm talking about the extra spectra. So generally, the if, if we look at the extra spectra, we can see this whole like this continuum, and there are some lines. And this extra spectra has different components, and this different components comes from different part of the Asian sport. This extra continuum, which I already told, comes from the extra corona, which is produced by the uh, after the UV photons. The next one is the reprocessed emission. This is the iron line at 6.4 kV. And this is the component hub, which is generally observed at 10 to 40 kV range. The hard photon from the X-ray corona is reflected in this accretion disk or in the VLR or in this torus and produce this kind of hub. And next there is Another component is generally observed below 1 kV. This is the excess of this power continuum, which is known as the soft excess. And uh, we actually do not know the origin of this soft excess. And there are several theories have been proposed, and all are like can explain equally well the, what the origin of the soft excess, but we do not have any concrete theory yet. So, and this is complex, and I'll not talk about this. So let's talk about the X-ray classifications. So in general, the X-ray classification is based on the obscuration property. So before that, I told that this torus generally uh, obscures the light from optical light or the very soft energy X-rays. So if the uh, this uh, obscuration properties of the torus uh, can be represented by this term in each or the line of sight hydrogen column density. If this value is less than 20 by 22, we call it unobscured. In, kin in the case of unobscured agent, we generally observe this kind of excess spectra. And there are some lines and there is just continuum. But if the NH is more than 20 by 24, uh, generally, it's more than 10 to 22, we call them obscure. But in the extreme case, the NH can be as high as 10 to 24 per semi square. In that case, we have spectra like this. So, what happens is this if the NH is too high, so the torus will block more light. Basically, they tend to block the softer light or low energy photon. So, this part of the light will be blocked by the torus. So, you can only see the high energy part. And this is basically the processed or detected spectra which I showed here. So, depending on this energy value, we can classify the uh, agents as obscured and unobscured in the X-ray region. Now, all kind of X-ray classification and the optical classification can be explained by this unification model of AGM. Initially, this model has been proposed in like early 1980s, and till now, these models have been explaining all kinds of AGM phenomena very successfully. So, what this model is like? So, this is the black hole and the equation is VLR, and this is TODAS. So, if you are observing the agent from this side or very low incision angle or the you have hash on view. You can see both NLR and both VLR, which are observing from this side. So in that case, your spectra will look like this. You can see both broad lines and narrow lines. And at the same time, if you are, since you are observing from this side, you do not have any obscuring materials in your line of sight. So in X-ray region, you can also explain the unobscured agents. But what happens if we are observing from this side? So if you are observing from this side, our inclination angle is like 90 degree. 
this light will be blocked by this torus and the uh, your optical spectra will look like this this is because you can see still that you can still see the inhaler because it's further away because it's like 100 percent from the black hole but torus is like about one or two percent so this torus can block the light of the blr but not the light from the inhaler so your optical spectra will have only the narrow lens and also in the same time the this obscuration will be also be reflected in the X-ray spectra. So obscured state of the X-ray spectra can be explained by this. But this has been used uh, like uh, successfully explaining all the agent phenomena in the last 40 or 45 years. But this changing look event, which has been, although it, uh, we know about the changing look event from 70s, but this field has been re-emerged in the recent last 10 years or so. So this changing look event cannot be explained by this unification model. Why? So let's talk about what is changing look event. So I press, let's, actually there are two kinds of changing look events. One is observed in the X-ray, one is observed in the UV and optical. So in X-ray, so we, uh, I say that there are two kinds of, um, I mean, you can classify the X-ray spectra two kinds. One is unobscured and obscured. So some agents can switch between unobscured and obscured state in like time scale a few hours to years, even as long as two hours or three years. Uh, sorry, hours. So this kind of phenomena cannot be explained by the unification model. Because in case of uh, if you try to explain this change by unification model, you need to like uh, change the uh, obscuring material or the uh, obscured state very rapidly, which is not possible. And then there is another kind of changing the region or changing the region which has been observed in the UV and optical. In this case, type 1 agents become type 2 and type 2 agents become type 1. Again, the time scale for this kind of event is like few months and two few years. So again, this cannot be explained by the unified unification model. It is because if you try to explain this kind of behavior with the unification model, which is basically based on the given and respect to the product, you need to change the whole orientation. For example, if you are like, it's type one right now, you are observing from here. So to become a type two, you need to rotate this like this. So it cannot happen in a time scale of few months or few years. At least you need some millions of years to do, do that. So that's why the signification model cannot explain this. So we need something else to explain this kind of phenomena. Also, in the earlier, uh, people tried to correlate between these two kind of changing loop events, but they are not related and they are completely independent. So in my talk, in the rest of the talk, I'll be just talking about this kind of changing. So the optical. Uh, CSNCO events, I mean, uh, you said that it, this is the hour scale change from obscure to hour scale. Yes. But can there be also like minute scale, like what is the lower limit where people have seen this looks changing? Is it like minute scale um, change? So as low as I know the hour scale has been observed. Okay. But maybe like... Uh, but minute scale is a bit difficult because so in case of minute scale, you really need to put the obscure very close to the black hole. So this is one example of a optical spectra of changing loop alien and this is 3516, where you can see this change of the optical spectra occurred in a time scale of seven years. So in 2007, it was type one broad lines. But when it is reobserved again in 2014, the world is vanished. So within time scale of seven years, it becomes type two. So you cannot just change the orientation of the whole agent in a time scale of seven years. So basically, two kinds of theory have been proposed. One is by obscuration, one is by the accretion. So I'll talk about this. So what is the obscuration? How do we explain this changing agents by the obscuration? So you see there is a broad line and suppose this is an obscuring clouds or something. It's moving. So it's not, not if observer is here, 
you can the observer can see the broad lines directly. So it is type one now. After some time, these clouds move here and this block the light. So observer cannot see it now. So now it becomes type two. Again, when it moves away, the source is again type one. So this has been proposed to explain the changing locations in uh, with obscuration. But there are several problems with this theory. First problem is you really need a very large arch cloud to block the entire PLR. If you want to block the entire PLR and if you need, if you have a really large cloud, you cannot face very close to the black hole. You need to put it very further away. In that scale, if you just consider the Keplerian velocity of the cloud, the time scale would take like 50 to 100 years to this uh, changing things. But in reality, in observation, we just see in a few months. So this cannot be explained by this theory. What about multiple patchy clouds instead of a large obscure, uh, maybe smaller fragments? Yes, uh, that even if you have the like multiple, there's still some light will be scattered and will reach you. And also one of the most important thing is if there is obscuration, you can see this obscuration properties in your X-ray spectra, but which we do not see in the X-ray. In fact, in case of most changing locations, the NH doesn't change at all during the whole transition period. Then when it's type one or type two, the NH remains same. If you just look at the X-ray spectra. So this is not likely right now. Do not, do not consider this is one of the reasons. So next is the equation. So how this works? So suppose you have a BLR, but you really have a very low equation rate or uh, so you have a very low luminosity. And right now the there is no broad lines in the BLR region. So it is basically type 2. Now you increase the equation rate. So if you increase the equation rate, your luminosity will increase. And if your luminosity will increase, that luminosity will ionize the BLR clouds. In that case, they, there will be broad lines. So if the BLR clouds are not ionized, then why are the NLR cloud, the clouds ionized? Well, NLR cloud is like 100 percent away from the central black hole. So to reach light from the central black hole to NLR, it will take about 100 years. So they may be ionized 100 years earlier. But this is like few light days away from this central level, the black BLR. What is the concern? So, BLR is much closer. Correct. So, ionization uh, power of the radiation should change by BLR much more compared to the inner. Much more quickly. Quickly. Yeah. Much more quickly or not only quickly, the flux itself will be uh, higher for BLR. The radiation flux. So, chances to ionize BLR is more than NLR. Yes, but what is the claim that BLR yeah. is getting more ionized? No, no, no. BLR was not ionized, but NLR is. Oh, which is unlikely. NLR was ionized from a previous bright state. We changed in the last 100 years. Now it is changing again to ionize the BLR. Yes, yeah, so it is really hard to say NLR is changing. Generally, we see in other parts, it's not changing, it's really constant, generally you know, seen. <coughs> so it's, I mean, I said, uh, it's more like local phenomenon, the BLR is. Okay, so sorry to disturb, but uh, is it then okay to think that the, the ionization state of the BLR uh, can get affected and uh, the change states much more, much more rapidly compared to the moon? That is causing the changing look. Is that, is that yes, yes. Proper way to think about it. Ah uh, yes, so that is the case. So you that increase the expression rate, so that will increase the ionization state of the BLR. So the broad lines appear, and once you decrease again, then there will not be enough luminosity to ionize the BLR. So the broad lines will vanish. It will again become the type. So uh, and in this concept, this is the uh, only parameter that can. Cause. This is basically known as the Eddington ratio or mass normalized equation. So now this change of equation can occur in two ways. One is by tidal disruption event, or one is another is by instability. 
So this tidal disruption is uh, or TD event is like there is a black hole and some stars come and it is tidal disrupted and some matter from the start falls into the black hole. High equation this for some uh, like spherical equation or like that. So in this case, that huge matter which comes from the star can increase the equation rate and that can lead to the changing state transition. So this is one example, one year 1927, which has been observed like 2018. And in this case, the changing loop transition occurred by the TD event. And it has been observed like for more than two years and with continuous monitoring. So what happens in this case, the optical flux increases from this uh, around uh, in the late 2017. And at that time, the source didn't have any broad lines. It was type two. After two or three months, the H alpha and H beta lines, the broad lines tried comes and they appeared after three months. And you can see this variation of the broad lines, the equivalent width of the both lines. And when this is the maximum, and then again it falls. This is a classic TD profile. And one interesting thing is happened is the X-ray flux. So once the accretion uh, rate increases by the TD event, a lot of matter comes in. And we know that this X-ray generally comes from the X-ray corona. <coughs> what happens here when the lot of accreting matter comes in, that accreting matter destroy the X-ray corona with the rapid cooling. So that's why you can see that X-ray flux decreases here. But again, when the flux decreases and the matter access to the black hole, then again X-ray corona recreates. This has been very peculiar behavior and has been observed only in this, this source. So, so sorry, I want to yes. check. So if I look at the peak in the optical, yeah. uh, yes. is that optical? The, yes, the yes, the one, no? yes, this is optical. This is optical. <laughs> So that the peak in the optical and the drop in the X-ray, what is the time gap like? Uh, uh, it's around 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100 days. That's uh, likely because, so I mean, is, is that a, uh, is that you think a feasible time scale that for when TD. it's, yeah, because for TD, I think it's shorter. Is it, is, is it a comparable time scale or 100 days is okay? Or? No, no, actually what happens is the TD is still continuing, the light is still decreasing. Yeah. But what happens in the X-ray? It is peculiar. Because you are saying that the corona is destroyed. Corona right? is destroyed, yes. But started from here, and if you do not have X-ray monitoring in the first like hundred days, and when the X-ray monitoring happens, it may be higher in this case. We don't know actually, but then the this D. So in after hundred days, it so destroyed. My, my question is that the time lag. Between yes. the peak and the peak in the optical and the drop in the yes. X-rays is about 100 years. Yes. Is that what we expect? Yeah, actually that means the uh, when the type TD happened, this was like 100 light like away from the center of the apple. And when this comes to the X-ray corona, then it starts the rapid cooling. And then this... But that is not 100. That we exactly don't... Like light this means it's about... You know, one third of a part say. Uh, yes. Large scale. That's right. what that's what my concern so, is. In the beginning you said that it is no actually long this. But anyway, I mean hundred, I mean uh, point five point three per sec is not yeah. the distance of the no, but actually thing is we do not know what happens in that's the right. We don't know why the corona decreases. But this is probably the only source where this kind of behavior uh, yes. Yeah, but I understand, but I think if the proposal is that the but that because then you have to consider discuss time scales itself. It's not just light time. Then you have to consider that how this fluid process in the accretion this will affect the fluid in the corona. And, and actually the, those time scales are not oh, light so propagation. So that's so it's not very easy to kind of resolve. And actually we also don't know when this actually started because it could have started from here because we do not have data, so we cannot exactly know what is the exact time scale. Since we have data here, here, here there is no change in type one, type two, like that, right? No, no, it's it was type two, but once the TD occurred, then the broad lines only appeared. It was not before that. Was there a change in radio loudness? 
I don't remember. Oh no, I actually in this part there was no radio, but after like three years their radio jet appeared. Yeah, exactly. That's why you Yes. <laughs> So he, was, uh, he actually, his talk was mostly based on this object. Uh, yes, yes, he has, uh, they have done some work on this and they regularly monitor this source. And this is the just uh, first like one and, half, one and a half year. But after that, they continue to monitor and the optical flux decreases. Also the source again goes back to the type two, right now it's type two, but the jet appears. And for the like, as far as I remember for the last paper a few months ago, the jet also extending. So what is the time scale between the start of the TV and the jet appearing? Uh, it's like the three or four years. Yeah, yeah. Four years. I don't remember exactly that. That was 16 plus 6, something. Ah, yes, 16 plus 6. So actually, I mean, no, this that doesn't nothing to have with the black hole model. In general, what happens in case of jet, uh, jet generally uh, occurred when the accretion is like no, no, I'm not talking about black hole mass. What I'm saying is that the discussed time scale that will depend on the black hole. Yes, of course. So if you calculate that, so three years is fine, I guess, if the matter has fallen inside and then it has been ejected. No, the, uh, I don't agree with that because the <laughs> jet has nothing to do with the discussed time scale. Because you see the jet when the accretion rate is low or the power is low. Generally, in the high state, you would not be jet. <laughs> when it only is very low, then you can see the jet. So we can say that like this kind of thing that it is very high state, and then when it's I mean low, then jet appears. So if that is true, then before the before this TV, even there must have been a jet also because it was also in a low action state. Yes, but there was hardly any matter. You have to have some matter, right? No, but already is it completely established that. To have a jet, you have to have a low accretion state. I mean, is it? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's mostly, sort of kind of a picture, but it's not like totally, yes. totally established. I mean, there are some airlines because jet and airlines super ones where the accretion rate is estimated to be what an interval. Yeah, yes. Ah, yes. Yeah, so this is a quite mystery because, I mean, the jet thing is, I would say, we do not know know the I mean complete picture, but it's likely. Mm -hmm. Slightly. Yeah. Sorry. So, what happens to the narrow like? It's a constant. Uh, it's constant. So, it's not affected by this radiation at no, all. No, no, no. Why is it so? It's, uh, because it's further away. So, time scale is quite high right now. It's further away, but how much further? Right? It is within 100 parts. 100 parts means around 100 30 years. years. Yeah. So maybe if after 30 years we can see some change. So it's really hard to say. Yeah. yeah. But this is one, I mean, TD can lead to the changing state again. And another thing is instability. So this has been, uh, this instability has been like, can be used to explain most of the changing to the transition. So what happens in this case? You already have an accretion disease, and there are some instability, discussed or thermal or magnetic rotation instability that can change the accretion rate, and that change of the accretion rate can lead to the changing state transition. Also, in this picture, also in this instability kind of thing, you also see that uh, the soft excess part, which is generally observed in the low energy, which is generally observed in the type one state, and in type two state, the soft excess vanishes. So that led to compare these things with the black hole X-ray binaries. So what happens in the black hole X-ray binary? You see in the black hole X-ray binary, there is many two states. One is the hard state, one is soft state. In hard state, we only see the non-thermal emission, but in the soft state, we see also thermal emission. So generally type one state is now, uh, so the type one state is now compared uh, uh, like considered as a soft state of the black hole binary, then the type 2 state is now considered as a uh, hard state of the black hole binary. So, this what is one of the. If the accretion disk recedes away from the black hole or something like that? Uh, in generally, hard state, the, we believe the accretion disk recedes from the, the inner radius. Inner radius. In XRB. 
Excited. Yes, and like it's uh, trying to compare both the XRD with the agents in case of this instability models. So with this kind of things, you can explain most of the changing look agents. The main problem is time scale. Because in case of Blackboard X-ray binary, the outburst occur and then decline it's hardly in a few months time scale. So and generally this such time scale can explain this. So if you want to explain the new transition with this kind of things, the time scale is much more higher for the agents. Because this time scale, as you already said, that is depends on the black hole mass. So for the AGNs, it's 10 to 6 to 10 to 8 solar mass. So we just put the AGN mass or the black hole mass in the equation. You can see that this such time scale will tend to the 4 to 10 to the 5 years. But changing transition occurs in a like few years. So you cannot. And this is the only problem with this kind of things. And also there are some other time scale involved like dynamical time scale which basically the rotational time scale or thermal time scale, which may be agree with the some uh, changing to transition, but we need more data to confirm this, which I'll be coming later. Okay. So basically like, uh, so we have like this are the some open question right now. How common that they are very rare. The large surveys only find like one percent or less changing the pages. And how this transition depends on other parameters like level mass, NH or application rate, or what is the time scale. So for this, we conduct a statistical study using 20. Okay, this is uh, old slide. I didn't change it. It's actually 20 changing locations all the local one using the optical and X-ray observation in the last 40 years. So from the optical observation, we get the information whether it is in type one state or type two state. And equally from the simultaneous X-ray observation, we get the information about the Eddington rate and the NH or the obscuration. So uh, Arvajit, you are saying that about 20, there are cases where there is a type one to type two or type two to type one transition. No, actually I selected this sample from the bad Asian survey. So from that survey, around 37 Asians are there which are changing look, but I choose this 20 because which of the simultaneous are data, simultaneous optical and X-ray data. So there are 37, let's say 37, yes. for which you have this type 1 to type, type 2 one. kind of transition. Uh, yes. And some of the sources have transition occur like 5 or 6 times. Oh. In 40 years limit. Yes, in the 40 years limit. And there is no periodicity in that country. No, there is no periodicity. Yeah. That is one problem because we do not know because but there is no. Data says for 40 years, for 40 years, there are emission line information for these AGN. Yes, that's the one problem is that we do not know exactly if we have the, all the information because there may be some from of the, there is no observation of a particular case one of object and we do not know whether it is type 1 or type 2 in that case. So, because like... Your telescopes are like 40 years you are saying, so what are the surveys like which telescope... Actually, it's, uh, I collected this from the literature and so this is like many various observatories are involved. And by broad you define like what? Oh. 5 angstrom or what? No, it's uh, broad. more than 1000 kilometer per second. So, so then I tried to find any relation with the Eddington ratio, which is, comes from the X-ray analysis. And for the MC source, I find that uh, the Eddington ratio is decreasing if we move from type 1 to type 2 for the MC source. So that tells you that uh, changing loop transition is generally offered by the accretion, change in accretion rate. Sorry, sorry, I didn't understand. So each of these patterns is its source. Each source. See one, see yes, then what, how, what are all these data points? This is the Eddington ratio oh, and the x-axis is the uh, optical state, <laughs> type 1 or 1.5. So, if so you are, it is the same object? No, no, or... the object is not. It is one object. Yes. yes. Same object, different uh, spectral types. Different spectral types is not just 1 and 2. There is also between 1 and 2, there is 1.2, 1.4, 1.5. No, it's one there are... 1 2, so, so, the x-axis is the spectral type. Y axis is the Eddington ratio, and each panel is each object. Each point is a
Yeah. Okay. So for like for to consider this one object, you can see that decreasing. If we uh, decreasing an incarnation, we move from type one towards the type two, and it will seen from all the objects. And in time, we can be anywhere, right? Yes, in time, it's not time information is there. So next, I just uh, calculate the median value for each spectral state and plot it, and again I find the same relation. And one interesting thing is when I plot the same things which are not changing leukagens from the same sample, they always have a higher Eddington ratio compared to the changing points. So this is one of the interesting thing because this may be related to the post galaxy properties or something else we do not know yet. So but this is interesting why the changing loop always have a lower Eddington ratio compared to the other regions. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure that the post galaxy would uh, play a um, big role in, in, in determining the heating generation of system, right? This must be related to what's going on in the accretion physics. Yes, but the, the galactic accretion has some, may have some effect on the accretion in the inner scale through the torus. So it's not clear yet, but there are some indications. Okay. So we are trying to say that these are if uh, could be a different kind of host galaxies that it's just that there could be more gas. Yes. More gas. So that there is more activation. Uh, it's also so related. I understand that supply and uh, starting down of old gas. It's also related to the like, Asian cycle. So <laughs> for like in an Asian cycle, so you have a you can say the different state is there when the activation rate is low, NH is low, then Accretion rate increases because of the galactic accretion, and at the same time, NH also increases. And after a certain time, when accretion rate is high enough, it can blow away the NH or obscura. So this is the whole picture. The changing look agents are fine at a particular small place. No, but how do we normalize the sample? I mean, you are saying that this is an archival data of 40 years or whatever, and you are looking at uh, changing loop AGN and then AGN, uh, those, yes. those are not changing loop. Look, yes. What is the selection criteria here? How are these AGNs selected? Well, all the agents are selected from the same sample, bad sample. And from my data, we just calculate the median value for the, each spectral no, state. So that I'm having is that when I'm comparing and saying that these guys have lower things compared to those guys, yes. then they must have something similar or in some way they are similar that I can talk about the Eddington ratio and say that this should not be, ideally there should not be any difference but for this changing of system. Did you understand what? No, so the spectral type is same. Changing so, at the time when spectral type of the changing AGN is let's say 1.8 and the uh, AGN is not a changing loop, having the spectral index of 1.8 having a higher Eddington ratio. And this is also to for the Okay. What is the viewer rate here? Oh, this is just uh, different uh, volumetric correction. I did not say because of it will make this complicated. And also the agents, they do not, I mean, change the flux or getting an issue over the years. So it's remain constant. And how are you calculating the spectral type? <coughs> spectral type from the uh, broad, whether it is their broad lines or narrow lines. No, but the uh, fractions. Uh, sorry, fraction. I mean, fraction and uh, how, when you say something oh, okay. is one Okay. Uh, it's the basically uh, from the ratio of the broad equal line and narrow O3 lines. So if it's 1.8, the ratio is between okay. uh, less than 0.3 or something. And it's in type 1.9, there is no broad H beta line, but only broad H alpha line. And in case of type 2, there is no broad line. So you know the masses of these black holes? Uh, yes. So at this, that means, do they have the similar kind of volumetric luminosity? Because then these guys must be more massive. The, yeah, this is all the mass normalized. Yeah, that I'm saying, but yeah. the ratio is 
And the next thing we try to find the relation of the uh, spectral type in the NH, which is particularly the obscuring property, and we do not see any relation at all. So, next thing we do the same thing and we find for other regions, which is not changing loop one. Okay. So, basically, this orange points are the for the non changing pages, and we see that in each value increasing when it moves type two. This is consistent with the what unification model claims. This is true. But in case of changing look agents, we do not see this changing much. So, we can say that it doesn't depend on the image. But other regions, it's code like this. So, it's expected. So again, this tells you that changing agents are somehow different from the other agents. And this NH is calculated from the extra properties, extra structure. And the data points are sorry, average lower? No, this is the median value. Median at each spectrum step. That's the next thing is the most in interesting thing is which I was talking about the comparing the black hole extra binary with the changing loop agent. When yes. we calculate the transition Eddington ratio, so at this Eddington ratio, source change from type 1 to type 2 or type 2 to type 1. So the median value is the exactly same what is observed in case of the black hole extra binary, around 1% uh, of the Eddington limit. So this again tells you that there is some link between that it goes into a hard state above yes. that it goes into a soft. So above this it goes to soft state, below this it goes to hard state. So this if you move above this, so you have type one and below this you have type two. So again, this tells you there is a there may be a link between the black hole refinance and the changing loop transition or changing regions. So this is one of the interesting kind of you don't follow what you will say. What are the red triangles? As this is the median value for different transition from type 1 to type so 1. So those percent. are all the values and then it is a median, median value. value. Yes. So, okay. So the median, okay. So you are saying that the median values are below that line. Ah, yes. So which means that this line okay. is the uh, minus 2 in log scale. Right. So this is 1% uh, of the initial limit in case okay. of the. But no, but what is your proposition here? What, what are you saying? I am saying that at this transition is the same for the both black hole and the agents. In case of changing loop agent, we have median value at 1%. So uh, above this Eddington ratio, we have type 1 agent. Below this, we have type 2 agents. But your distribution is going all over the list. So that uh, that part you have drawn. Yes. What is that? Yes, we have a distribution, but we are talking about the median value. I understand. Yes. 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 Y
Yeah. And and then the other two red triangles, those uh, are no, not see or not. Those are not changing look. No, no, they are changing look, but the transition is for type 1.8 to 1.9 and 1.9 to 2. Not a drastic change. Okay, okay. So yeah. drastic change happens at various values of lambda editor. Yes, but, but the, somehow the median of that is close to that to hard of transition. Yes, again that even in the in case of black hole experiment, that is also a median value right. for the transition. So yeah, but <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, so, that's fine. So the median value match in the both case. So there may be a link. We are not linking that. Two orders of magnitude distribution. Yeah, yeah. Minus one to minus two. Yes, also the same thing also we see in case of black hole extra binary. So that this if you consider this this matches. Lambda sample side where change the median value for angels. Uh pardon? And the sample size because large. Uh, yeah. Then this median may regular change, change by factor of one or in log uh, Actually, there are some study with a little bit of more sample than mine, and also they find this median value around this. But also, sorry, median value in log scale or median value in actual scale? Uh, no, no, this median value and then we put in the no, log scale. So, so median value is yes. calculated after taking log. Is different. No, no, no. Can we calculate the median? Median, then I plot for the plotting, I just put the loss. Median of the loss is not. In any case, people usually think that the arts of transition happens at 0.01 to 0.1. Ah, yes. That's what people say. Yes. No one says that it well. Oh, if you can say that 0.01, it says 0.01 to 0.1. Yeah, you cannot say that and one. Yeah, you can say that this happens between point. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, but, but this is accretion. This is accretion, but, I agree. But PD so you at the end say connect these two, or do you say that these are different things? So do you think that TDs can create such things in yeah. the accretion, or are you saying they are separate phenomena? No, 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 no. TD is just a cause. TD I mean, one, 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 one cause. I mean, just to one. So this is not accretion. Some it is just accretion. accretion. Okay. In the instability, in the accretion. Accretion is here. TD is just one. It is the one case where this okay. okay. Next thing is about the time scale which, which I was talking about. So when I plot all the time scale which I observe from the, my data, we find the median value is very low, around three to four years. And again, I am saying that this is the upper limit data because we do not have the like all the observations, and it is possible that many changing event has been missed because for example one object is like observed in 1980s and then next observation was taken in 1990 so in between 10 years there was no data so it may have caused like several changing transition in between two or three or maybe more so that's why this is just the upper limit and even in the upper limit we just find the median like around three to four years so it is possible most of the transition is occurring even less than that so we do not and we definitely missed many changing the transition. And next, when we compare with the different relevant time scales, like this is the discussed time scale, this is dynamic and thermal time scale, and we see this is the observed transition time scale. And it's always less than the discussed time scale, but can match with some of the this C cards. But since they are the upper limit, we do not know they match at exactly which card. So we do not know exactly which kind of instability is occurring at the accretion disk, which is leading to the accretion rate change. What is this? Thickness of the accretion disk matter. You are calculating. Of, of course. Yes. So what yes. is the thickness disk? Uh, I take this uh, equal so, to 0.2 and the alpha is 0.01. Of course, this change. Also, there are some theory addition, some papers have been proposed that if you input the magnetic field in a standard Sakura's nerve disk or it may be faster, so it can match with this. 
And it's sustained in all of Yes, in case of people have a large magnetic field in the disk. So there are the theory and, and there are many people and many groups are working to match this observational things with this theoretical stuff. So this is one of the problems still remains and this is one of the open question till now. So this is like a summary. So this transition is occurring by the expression rate and the you can see this the median value is around 0 0.01, same as in the software state, hard state transition of the reflex dependence. And the median of the time scale may be less than three years or more, but definitely we do not know much about this. And we hope that some future survey which are likely going on, some started going on like HDSS 5 and LSHT, which will be which will start operating in December. So LSHT basically will observe the whole sky in a three days cadence. So it will observe every object in three days. So that will help us to identify many changing locations and also the constraint the transition time scale. So that may help to like understand the what exactly physics going on in the patient is. Mm -hmm. ah, okay, so this is written in the next And there is also some like uh, a hint that sports galaxy may be involved in case of changing transition, but we have we do not know for sure yet. So this is for the future. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Arvajit, for presenting these interesting results. Questions? Yes, who is it? Kind of, uh, first is you, you said uh, that you have selected a sample of 22 uh, aliens uh, yeah. from the back. Now, uh, uh, you calculated the column density. So, we use XRT or back to calculate the column density, or you use you No, I use the, all the XRT data. Uh, the sample is collected from the bad samples, yes. but the data is whatever I can put back. Okay, like give examples which tells you. I mean, XMM, XMM, and mm -hmm. the, I mean, so generally, these XRP and XRP have the tendency to tendency to overestimate uh, the parameters, like column density, like uh, photon index, and all. So, if you use the upgraded telescopes like Minstar or XMM, mm -hmm. the the they are, they constrain these parameters much better. Okay. So it takes place. It, it has been observed that if you use back, something is quantum thick. But mm -hmm. when you use new style, it becomes quantum thin. But that doesn't mean that the source has become has yeah, become changed. For bad the limitation of the technology. For bad vector alone, you cannot say anything about the NH. Yes, but you also you definitely need the soft energy part to constrain it much better. So basically, in my what what I considered is that I took a sample and look for the optical observation is there or not. Okay. And then I took for if there is simultaneous extra observation or not. Okay. I only took those. I did not uh, consider other because I do not have any uh, like if there is extra observation but no optical observation, that information is not useful for my work. selection came from the optical, optical. side. And then you... then I use for the simultaneous one. Okay. First one. Okay. And second one is uh, there are also some uh, models for the instabilities apart from PD, like uh, like warp equation disk or radiative fountains. So can we uh, distinguish uh, on the basis of the change of these uh, BLR lines and also these extra flux changes uh, yeah. that how what exactly is taking place or we just consider standard is something PD and just go. No, no. The TD is definitely where the different signature. It basically, you can TD have a like classic light curve. Okay. You can uh, consider, I mean, you can identify TD easily. But in case of other things, you cannot identify that easily. Okay. So, I mean, this basically the equation rate which is changing the BLR flux or broad line. But which is changing, we just for that, we need the information on the time scale. Because different instabilities work in different time scales. Yes. Okay. Other questions? Yes. Also, have two questions, but I'll first go for the first first question. 
So uh, this is uh, like more broad. So if we see that the time scales that you're talking about, yes. like three, four days or days scales, right? Uh, yes. But then, uh, then, then uh, we heard that a very small fraction of the AGM mm -hmm. behave as changing the AGMs, right? Is that right? I mean, it's it's, it's a very, it's very, it's very rare event. Ah, uh, yes. So why would that be? I mean, why would whatever the reason for this change in accretion is, why would they be so rare? I would expect them to happen much more. Yes, actually, in like. Whole lifetime of an agent, it it's must very long, very it's long. long. So it must have every agent must have gone through this state transition. Yes, yeah, so that's why but I the main, expect that a lot of them. Yeah, do. but the main thing is this rapid variable, rapid changing. It's the kind of rare thing. Is it because that now we have the observations to detect them possibly, or because physically I would expect more of uh, yes, this of, kind of scenario given. The lifetime of AGN and given the time scale in which these changes. Yes, of course, I mean one is possibility is observational. We do not observe every object very regularly. So it is possible many of the changing agents have been missed because of there is no observation. So, but other thing is that I do not expect it if we observe everything like every day or every week, it will not go much higher the number of changing agents. But other thing I really think is something to do with the uh, life cycle of the agents. So there may be some like uh, time or something like that, but it can occur very rapidly. Something, some thing is uh, like what I said, mm, causing the instability very rapidly. But we do not know exactly at, at the, right now. But remember that uh, I can see yeah, some figure here. Yeah. I mean, it's not in my talk. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. This is basically a like life cycle of an agent. So this is one place where you have very low accretion rate and very low NH. Somehow the accretion is triggered by the some galactic accretion or the yeah that's to the total. So your accretion rate increases, energy increases, so it into this state. And once is that the agent start accreting very rapidly with high eddington rate or maybe in super eddington case. So after some times you have a very large luminosity that will just blow away the obscuring material from the from its from from the line of sight. And in that case. It will come here in the time in the phase three, and after sometimes since the all the materials have been blown away, so there will be much less material remains in the physical black hole. And once they activate the whole thing, they will again come to this low activity phase through this. So this is a like agent cycle, and it, we expect this to be occurred in like a time scale of millions of years. But interesting thing is the changing to agents are most likely find in this region. So this is like in this transition region. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying that uh, when we are talking about AGN accretion and all that stuff, uh, they are pretty large time scale. But yes. here we are seeing changes in uh, uh, you know, day scale or I don't know, month scale, hour scale. Uh, yes. That's very small compared yes, so, to the lifetime of them. Of course, so there yes, there must be some instability then. Okay, so that's fine. Yeah. But I have a general comment about that. See, AGN getting very bright and then getting dimmer, this kind of brightness variability, that happens in many yes, AGN. Yeah, but whether this type to type one transition will change, happen, that is happening in a very small number of cases. I, I agree, but the physics that is being proposed behind this type 1 to type 2 transition. That doesn't look like a very rare phenomena no, no, that, in the life cycle. No, no, that's what I'm saying, but the proposed physics. So, so that is the question. Is saying yeah. If the time scale for oh. the proposed model is of the order of days or months, yeah. then it should happen much oh, more, more frequently. 
Yes. That's a fraction you see. see but but remember is. that no, my point is that this variability that we do see. That we do see. Right. Now, if in many cases the, the kind of optical brightness that is changing in this 37 changing into kg, that kind of optical variation happens all the time. Yes. yes. In many ages. Right. But only 37 of them is showing this type 1, type 2 transition. So they are not, it's not just the change in optical brightness. That's, so that there is, are other things. Yeah, so that, that could be another, that's why I think my question was that if it's just a change in accretions, it, it is definitely that might, might be the guiding reason, but it could also lead to what is our line of sight to those yeah. objects? Yeah. What is the geometry of the torus and everything that might also play a role, which can limit our ability to see the changes as much as we expect. No, so that's the main thing I believe that there was not observation because for some sort it's the time transition time I like observe like eight thousand days, around seven thousand days. So for this object, it has been hasn't been observed for this long time. So it could be like. Uh, I mean, go through several changing transition in between them. So there must be some more object which are not observed during that state transition. So definitely it's not 37 in my current sample. So it's definitely more than that. But we do not have the information. If I had another question, but there are more. I have one, but please go ahead. Uh, similar type of question. Given this is the uh, your uh, model for changing the KG, what happens to our standard theory? Uh, means the standard uh, unified model. So yes, I want I whatever you are saying. I don't think that is hard. It's just addition and physics that. Yes. Uh, we just need to just modify that standard model. It's we need to introduce like terms like equation, covering fraction, and all. Not only the inclination. We need to know just orientation. Yeah. So then, then if say if I do a type two age, it could be that the border in the initial is not. I am not seeing from here. I am seeing from. Uh, so what you are saying is called intrinsic type. Yes. Intrinsic type C. So that could also happen. Yeah, but in that case, well, remember that originally type 2 type 1 was established by the fact that type 2 showed broad lines in scattered lines. Uh, yes. But in that case, you need to so, I mean, okay. remove the, all the material from the line of sight. So right now, I mean, you know, in this kind of small sample, you cannot really say anything. I mean, you have to propose things, but it's difficult to say anything strong. But I think that time scale, when the electricity works, the time scale will be the most important things. But remember that, you know, I mean, for example, roughly 100 AGNs have been uh, observed for decades, uh, more than a decade, to uh, do reverberation. None of them changed it. Right? <laughs> no, <I'm saying> <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's not, um, it's not there is, I mean, even if you, observe, I mean, whether how much, what fraction of agents are showing this, that, so, uh, but, but if there are no other question, then I'll, I'll go, I'll ask one question. I just have one quick question. So now, it has been uh, over 40 years, they are from which observatory? It's from different but observatory. Possibly. These are not one space, the so one it's just, he has chosen these objects. Then he has looked at literature that, okay, are the emission line spectrum available somewhere? How do we get the data? Money. Yeah, data. 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 I mean, from x-ray, it is very easy to get the... Uh, basically, for the optical observation, how did you collect the data? That's a very PhD yeah. student-like question. Uh, basically, for the old data, I just looked stuff in the literature. No, but literature gives you plots. How did you get the data points, the, the, the data data? Like the data that you have. I didn't get the data. I just, so you just read from the plots. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's that's <laughs> only a PhD student will ask this question. But it's a very, very valid and relevant question.
my second question. Yes. That, suppose when you are coming to things like adding the ratio, then you need the black hole mass. Yes. But then the black hole mass has been measured in some method. Yes. That yes. method has some error. So then by, for computing your derived parameters, let's say like a reading thing, large thing, your reading the you should have an error on your reading the no, What is the order of the data and how does that affect your results? It's ordered in a log scale, it's 0 0.05 to 0 0.1. So these mass measurements are done how? How are these things? Yes. Of this thing Mostly it's they are done from the uh, H beta line. H beta line, the scale. Sing, sing, single epoch. Uh, yes. Yeah. And they are those are factor ten errors. Okay, so yeah, it's not, not possible to have. But so they are. Not really not the ones. I mean, if you look at like old mass measurements, they were very erratic. Yeah, but if you go to the plots with lambda errors, I think they are secure like, because the dependence is pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. not this one. Yes. This one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. These. Yes. So these are. Uh, so even if you consider the errors to be like 0.1 uh, dex, uh, yeah, 0.1 dex means factor of three, right? 0.1 factor of three, something like this. So Which is fine then. Which is then fine. Remember that things are happening in the same spectral type as well. Because the that's the ratio, it's a range, just not a single. You number. could color code these points with uh, time, then that would be better. Okay. So basically, the epoch. So essentially, you just instead of using blue, yeah. you use blue to red, and then blue means earlier times, green means mid time, and red. Anyway, so okay. So my question is, um, so first of all, the, the in all these sources, the type one type state changes and. Optical brightness also changes. Yes, yes. Would you say that that, ch well, that changed? So from type, so you are saying in law in ratio is changing, which is also mm -hmm. that. So that is by a factor of some, let's say in this case, it's going from minus 1.4 to minus 3. So that means the factor of 10 to 20, 30, something like that. Large factor, large factor of optical plus changes. Um, so, if it is really that, if it is really that much change, factor of 30, factor of 30 in AGN is actually quite uh, rare. Yes. In glaciers, factor of 30 in optical doesn't really happen that much. Uh, said, let's say 2 magnitude, 3 magnitude change happens. So, that is 2.5 to the power 3. And uh, so, in AGN, factor of few is a very large change. So, factor of 30 is extremely large, extremely rare changes. But I am saying that, so what, about, what happens in the X-rays? In X-rays, similar change happens because in one case, you are showing that the X-ray is going down. Yeah, that is not the usual case, right? No. Because usually, when you are saying lambda Eddington is going down, that means X-ray is also going down. Yes. So, even in case of like optical, you also see this kind of change of the continuum size. Um, yeah, but this is only factor of four. This is only factor of four. I mean, but, but in all your plots, go to that plot again. That uh, any ratio. That is actually remarkable. That kind of change. So in all of these cases, the lambda Eddington is changing by. Uh, this is 1.2, this is 1.5, this is 2.5. So, something like 30 to 150 times change is happening in AGN optical luminosity or whatever luminosity. Uh, for which band are you using for lambda? Yeah, 2 to 10 K. 2 to 10 K. So, in X-ray, you have a change of some few tens to few hundreds. Hundreds? Yeah, in some cases, yes. see, point minus two point five to minus two three. Two point five or five hundred. So that is three hundred. That is remarkable change. These are these are, these are exceptional cases. The exceptional. Cases. Yeah, this is not normal at all. It's very very.
Factor of few is the normal. AGN variability over years even. Factor of few is normal in extreme. And these are what in day scale or? No, 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 no. over 10, 10 years, 10 years, 30 years. 30 years. Even like for unit one five double six, I saw this change is like seventy times in a time scale of a few months, two or three months. It's changed like this. Because the time information. So this is a very very large amount of change. I mean, even for the most commonest of common agent, that is saying this is four one five. That is the middle panel. Uh, yes. Yeah. Even there, you you see you see hundred factor of hundred change. No, 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 no. Yeah, one minus three, minus one to minus three. Uh, so, uh, factor, factor, factor. Are you sure about these numbers? I'm sorry. I mean, I understand <laughs> this is a very important thing in your work, but this sounds incredible, actually. You have extra class measurements. Oh, like, uh, yes, yes, I like have. The, 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 the light curve, the extra light curve. I guess it's but I have all the slides. I just have one comment of x is four one five. Yeah, yeah. That is the closest X-ray brightest agent that we have. So it's like ten to the power minus ten arcs per centimeter squared per second. That's the fast generally. So changing that by hundred would mean that it would go down to ten to the power minus twelve. That is yeah. quite low. I mean, or or ten to the power minus eight. <laughs> then you see it in the. No, it is it is really remarkable change. So again, that that I guess what I want to say is then you don't you should not expect too many changes. You can see because <laughs> these kind of changes are not happening. Really it's but all a change. Yeah. Yeah. So all my sample is basically selected from the optical. Yeah, thirty time. or hundred times still that might be like ten sigma. So this is a, this is not published. These these things are no, this is submitted. Some is it on a uh, page? No, it's an, no, it's not. Yeah, just reading or to prepare. Yeah, I'd like to see the the, the data. Yeah, also, uh, you know, we are recording it to make it public. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is that fine with you or not? Yeah, I asked yeah. Okay, so is there any other question?